Hey what's up guys and welcome to Cert Bros. In this video we're going to be looking at NTP. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol. It has the very important job of synchronizing clocks over a network. Time is one of those things that can be easily overlooked. In a network though, having inconsistent time, even just by a few minutes, can cause problems. Every device on a network will have an internal clock. These internal clocks will track both the time and the date. It's important to keep accurate clocks, otherwise you may run into issues with correlating logs, SSL certificates, software, and the list goes on. Let's take these two routers for example. If something happens to the link connecting them, we may want to look at the logs. Our two logs show the line went down on the 13th of September at 8.04. If we then look at our ones logs, it shows the link went down on the 1st of March at 12.25. The link went down at the same time, but because the internal clocks are not synced, it would be very difficult to correlate these logs. Now this is an extreme example, but when dealing with a lot of log information, even a few seconds can mean you're looking in completely the wrong place. The problem is, when our networks grow, keeping on top of the time and date for every device becomes nearly impossible. This is where NTP comes in. All of the devices will sync their clocks to an NTP server, which will have an accurate time. So now we know the importance of NTP and what it does, let's look at how it works. NTP uses a hierarchy system. At the very top, we have the big boys, the Mac daddies. These are highly accurate timekeeping devices such as atomic clocks, GPS or radio clocks. They are known as reference clocks. They have a stratum of zero, meaning they are the most accurate. What does stratum mean? NTP uses stratum values to identify the accuracy of a clock. Stratum values range between 0 to 15, with 0 being the most accurate and 15 being the least. Anything above 15 means the accuracy of the clock is not trustworthy. Stratum 0 clocks do not connect over a network. They are directly connected to time servers. They then sync their time and date to the reference clock. These are known as primary time servers. The way the NTP stratum model works is by adding a 1 to the stratum value at each layer. So these primary time servers have a stratum value of 1. As we go further down the stratum hierarchy, the stratum values increase. This is because the reference clock is further and further away, meaning the time is less accurate. NTP uses UDP port number. 1, 2, 3. So that's nice and easy to remember. Let's look at how a real life setup could look using NTP. First, we need a time source. For smaller networks, that source is likely going to be an NTP internet server. For larger, more security conscious environments, you may have your own internal GPS clock. I'll use an internet NTP server for this example. There are several NTP servers available, you just need to do a quick Google search. pool.ntp.org is a popular one. When connecting to an internet NTP server, most of the time it will be a stratum 1, 2 or 3 server. You should then sync an internal device to that NTP server. This could be a router, firewall or server. The choice is up to you. I'll be using this router. Once our router is synced, we can then use it to provide the time for the rest of the network. This makes our router a Stratum 3 device. This is because our internet NTP server in this example is a Stratum 2. If you have a more complex network with multiple routers, firewalls and VLANs, you may set up more internal NTP servers. Let's try this for real. I'm going to show you a basic NTP configuration. Here is router 1. It's already got an IP address and it's connected to the internet. The first thing we need to do is set up the time zone and summer time. 
Not doing this can make our clock incorrect, even with an NTP server. So first, let's set the time zone. In config mode, type clock time zone. And because I'm in the UK, we'll use GMT, which is simply a word, and 00 because it syncs up with the UTC time. Your time zone might be different. Next, let's change the summer time. Over here, we have something called British summer time. This is where our clocks go forward and back during the summer. To set this up, we need to type clock summer time BST, which again is just a word. And to make sure this reoccurs, we're going to type recurring last Sunday of March at 1 a.m. So that's when our clocks go forwards. And last Sunday of October at 2 a.m., which is when our clocks go back. OK, now that's set, we need to give our router a DNS server. That's because we need to translate our NTP server's domain name. To set this up, we need to type IP name server. And I'm going to use Google's DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. Next, we need to tell our router where to sync the time from. So I'll type NTP server, and now the name of the NTP server, which is pool.ntp.org. Now this is a domain name that's going to translate to my nearest NTP server. So that's why we needed to set the DNS. An important note here is that NTP doesn't sync the clock straight away. The way the algorithm works is by gently nudging the time until it's fully synced. So this can take a few minutes. You can speed this up by manually setting the clock as close to the accurate time as possible. Then NTP doesn't have as much work to sync up. There are two useful show commands for NTP. Let's exit out of here to privilege exec mode. The first command is show NTP status. This will show you if the device has synchronized, the stratum value of the device, and the IP address of the NTP server used for reference. If we type show NTP associations, this will show us the details of the NTP server we're using. It shows us the IP address of the NTP server and the IP address of its reference clock. It also shows us the stratum value of the NTP server. And of course, we can always check the time is correct by running the show clock command. So now this router is synced with our NTP server. Let's open router 2. We need to configure this router to sync its time with router 1. Again, all of the interfaces are already configured. So I'll open global config by typing configure terminal and quickly set the time zone, clock time zone, the word GMT, 00, zero and then the summer time by typing clock, summer time, the word BST, recurring, last Sunday of March at 1am, last Sunday of October at 2am. Now, let's set the NTP server. NTP server, and I'll type the IP address of router 1, which is 192.168.0.254. Just as before, we can exit out of here and use the show command, show NTP status. And as we can see, it has now synchronized with router 1. We can also see that this router has a stratum value of 4, which is one higher than router 1. This is because we are now one hop further away from the source. If we type show NTP associations, we can see router's one IP address, its reference clock, and its stratum value. So there we have it, a nice and simple NTP configuration. You could then configure the rest of your devices to synchronize their time with router one, and they will all be synchronized and accurate. This video is part of our full CCNA course, which can be found in the description so please feel free to go and check that out. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe.
The support from you guys really does help this channel grow. Other than that, thank you for watching.